I know we normally do, you know, more like check-ins and, um, and like, and learnings and, you know, sharing that we've done. And I'm wondering if we should just do like, just, you know, quick check-ins of how you're doing what's up in your life um, before diving, you know, before diving in. So what we've got is we've got our minutes. Um, reviewing our October 20th minutes that um, Jeremy sent. And Michael, I'm just seeing that this email that I sent got bumped back from you. So I will resend it. Apologies. Yeah. <clears throat> what happened is that my internet service provider, Silvernet, was down for three days. <clears throat> and oh everything, got lo everything was lost. <clears throat> I'll never see those memos. Um, so, um, and stuff that I sent, apparently never, never, got, to, never got to anybody. So, um, I, um, anyway, that's my excuse for being completely out of it today. No, and so is it still down? No, it just opened up this morning, and okay, and I expect to see a pile of stuff, but there's just nothing. So, yeah, I think everything everything got wiped out. Okay, sorry about that. That's that's. I mean, we're so reliant on our email, yeah. I can't imagine it's like losing my arm or something. And then, yeah. um. <laughs> Uh, okay, so then we'll go over, yeah, the minutes that Jeremy sent, um, city committee report back, um, public budget survey process, and then creative discourse phase two, um, and then uh, budget, uh, going over FY23 budget requests, including creative discourse work and stipends for the city committee, um, and then looking at VHIP landlord meetings work. Um, and so since we've got um, uh, creative discourse. We've got Sue and Nadia from Creative Discourse here. I am wondering if we should move up the Creative Discourse phase to agenda item to um, kind of first thing after our our check ins and minute review. Does that sound okay? Cool. Okay. Um, well, hi Nadia. Maybe we'll just do intros for you. I'm Shayna Casper. I'm on Kent Street, Montpelier. Um, and we have moved to this very early hour because I am switching jobs next week. Um, from uh, seven years at Community Action Works, where I work with community groups fighting pollution threats in our neighborhoods, to working for prescription drug pricing reform, which is very exciting. And I, um, it's 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 been a lot right now. And so thank you all for meeting so early. Um, and I am, it's cold out this morning. I just went for a walk, and my glasses all fogged up and everything. That's how I'm doing. Um, maybe I'll pass to Michael. You're also unmuted. Um, I'm here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm Michael Sherman, a member of this committee for, I guess I am the only remaining member who's been it from the beginning. So, um, and I've forgotten how many years that is now. And, it, <clears throat> and my other news is that as I just was mentioning, I've been in a blackout because my computer, my internet service provider was fried somehow. So that's my excuse for not being on top of stuff today. Thanks, Michael. Jeremy, you want to go? Sure. Hi, I'm Jeremy Beaudry, a member of the committee, <clears throat> uh, resident of Montpelier on Elm Street. Um, doing okay. A little bit early. But that's fine. It's good to get going early. Um, mostly okay. Just, you know, COVID. There you go. That's it. I had a, had a scare in my family, so... Um, with my parents and my sister's family, so dealing with that, um, but all is well. Thank you. Sorry to hear that. Palin, there you go. Morning, everyone. I'm Palin Kohn. I'm uh, a member of this committee too. I work for Norwich. I teach leadership courses, and I'm also leadership program coordinator there. And I am all well too. Um, and I have one exciting project um, uh, with my one of my colleagues. We decided to review our course syllabus and uh, make them uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion based. So we are changing the language, you know, basically everything. <laughs> so I'm very happy about it because when you dive in you can see that how many things you need to change because before that everything seems kind of yeah it seems okay there is no problem but now we are noticing so many things so that's all i have as in like uh, news so happy to be here thanks palin 
Uh, Cameron? Hi, everyone. I'm Cameron Niedermeyer. I'm the Assistant City Manager and staff support for this. Thank you for joining us, um, Sue and Dr. Mitchell. Um, so uh, I don't really have anything exciting to share, although I did find out this morning that they did go live with the website. So if you have kids age 5 to 11, you can get them vaccinated, which is very exciting. I'm sure anyone who has kids has been waiting with that for like bated breath. So um, just trying to get staff um, aware and get their kids signed up. So it's exciting. That's my news for today. Thanks, Cameron. Uh, Sue and Nadia, do you want to, want to take it away? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, Shane and Karen. It's so nice to see you again after some time has passed. Karen, I'm really sorry to hear that you're still coughing and I hope you're not still in recovery. Long haul um, COVID is not a joke. It is not yeah. a joke. Yeah, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Uh, Thank you. So we, uh, um, I really was excited for you to meet um, my, my new business partner, Nadia Mitchell. We've um, our team went through a year long kind of a discernment process about what our next step should be. And, um, and Nadia stepped forward into a, a partnership with me. So now we are a 50-50 partnership um, business going forward. And Nadia brings so much experience and expertise to the work um, from her long career. And I'm just so happy that we're in the work together now. And so I wanted you to meet her this morning. So I'm just going to turn it over to you, Nadia. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Sue. Um, Cameron, I woke up to that email this morning, so it is exciting. <laughs> um, it is exciting. And then as a parent, I also feel this responsibility to have the full dialogue with my children about um, COVID and um, and I when I had that with my daughter who is fully vaccinated, um, she um, she it took her a while to make the choice to be vaccinated, um, not that long, but it took her um, a little bit of time to really think through because you know there there are a lot of things we're learning about COVID and whatnot. So um, so I'm looking forward to having that conversation with my son. He's very diligent about mask wearing and people being responsible. So I, I suspect that conversation that he will make his choice really quickly. <laughs> um, but and we will be um, trying to get vaccinated right away. But that is exciting, um, and I appreciate the work that everyone's done. Um, I have been um, I have been um, working with Sue um, for over a year at this point. I guess it's November um, with um, Creative Discourse, and had prior to that been um, working myself. I had been um, most recently before, prior to um, um, to this business partnership working in higher education. So my the strongest part of my background is in higher education leadership, um, and my last role is in equity. Um, a leader for Champlain College, and um, I am also um, a teach. So I am. Uh, so I do some lecturing, though not this semester or next, or who knows when again, because we are so busy. And um, while teaching is my passion, um, I hope uh, one of my passions. I hope that I'll be able to get back to that, but I have no idea when that will happen because we've been um, we've been um, been lucky enough to have lots of. Um, good work, which is great. Seeing our seeing our communities and our um, community organizations really focusing on um, uh, being more equitable and providing opportunities for inclusion and and focusing on ways that they can be anti racist and really support um, their uh, the or the orgs that the. Uh, clients or participants, whatnot that they serve, but also the greater community has been um, a great joy. It comes with a lot of uh, work, especially as a Black woman doing this work, but um, I think we've been really successful uh, with, with some of our partners and it's felt really great. Um, I am, um, so I think that's about it. I know we have lots to do today, so I won't take up much more time, but I'll just say, you know, it's wonderful to hear about the work that we've done with Montpelier in the past. I think um, there's so much opportunity for, for continued work. And so looking forward to hearing from you all about, you know, um, your perspective on that and, and the direction that you're hoping to go in. Thanks so much. Um, and then Michael, I put in the chat, I tried resending it again and it still got pushed back. So maybe I'll just share my screen for documents. Does that make sense? Yes, that'll be good. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so let's just, uh, and then Michael, can you take notes? Uh, can you do minutes for today or, or Jeremy is, sorry. Amazing. Thank you, Jeremy. Oh. Woo! Thank, thank you, Jeremy. Giving Michael a, a must needed sabbatical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you both. Um, 
Okay, uh, so I will share my screen and go over the minutes real quick. So, because Michael, did you not get these at all then? I'm just realizing because I, I never, I didn't send out send out all the stuff until last night, and so I didn't. Probably I haven't not. Nothing. Nothing. Gosh. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, here we go. Let's um, the minutes from October twentieth meeting. Scroll down. Scroll down again. Scroll down again. And scroll down again. All right. Does anyone want to make a motion to approve? Um, I'll make a motion. Thanks, Michael. Helen, do you want a second? Yeah, I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nice. All right. So the motion passes. Okay. Um. Thanks all. And now let's. Yeah. yeah I don't know, hand it over to Creative Discourses or maybe we can provide a little bit of a context here too. So um, we had originally, um, uh, you know, been in communication with uh, Creative Discourses for kind of an equity audit program that was kind of going to be in two different phases. So of uh, begin to identify elements of like a shared vision for equity and anti-racism in Montpelier Boy, by doing like an equity state uh, equity assessment of of stakeholders by having all these different um, uh, like focus group meetings with different key uh, key groups and providing kind of a summary of report uh, to the city with these key themes to be able to you know, start prioritizing and focusing forward on. And then phase two is going to be on an equity summit uh, in Montpelier to really start you know building some of that deep trust, have dialogue and work sessions, kind of while we have these like I, like focus groups more siloed of kind of bringing those different folks together and having like recommendations for action plans coming out of that with like a celebration um, at, at the end. Um, and so I think, yeah, we're kind of on the, we're, we, we've wrapped up phase one that has, you know, we released that report earlier this fall or, you know, late summer, I guess, however you want to define it. And then, um, yeah, kind of looking at how we should be approaching the work and looking at the work for phase two, there's like a bunch of different pieces in it. And so kind of what to prioritize where, um, and, and just wanting to hear from you about what you're seeing as being the next steps. And let me see if I can put that in the chat then too, if that's helpful. But although Michael, you should have that from, you know, from a couple of months ago as well, the, um, the phase one plan. Right. So I think I would love to just acknowledge that when I just look at your agenda for today and read the minutes from your last meeting, it does seem like a lot of what you're focusing on is really well aligned with what we were hearing in our conversations during the focus groups and what we heard from the survey. So that's just incredibly encouraging, that alignment. And I guess one thing I wonder is, um, you know, how you've been communicating with the broader community about this work, right? Uh, so I just had a question about that. Do folks know, do folks are, have you connected the dots between all this good work you're doing and what you are hearing from the community? I feel like I can speak to that um, since, uh, you know, this committee's work is really to make recommendations to council and to staff, right? So y'all came up with a recommended report, like recommendations, and um, my staff has taken that extremely seriously. Um, we've built um, all of the recommendations. I think I don't, I can't think of any that we didn't. 
into our departmental work plans. Um, so those are baked in now to what our departments will be doing and prioritizing for the next fiscal year. And um, the council continues to put money towards this initiative, showing you know real um, commitment to that. Um, uh, there has already been some uh, changes on a lot of how we do business here. We're working very hard on getting language access really taken care of. Um, it's really shaped a lot of our conversations around communication and outreach. Um, so I, I think that was really our, I mean, I, I sound, when I say that, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's been a ton of work. We've also done multiple um, staff trainings on equity and diversion or equity diversion, Jesus, I'm sorry, equity and inclusion. Um, did a lot of work around what those words even mean. Um, we can't use them interchangeably. So how do we, um, how do we actually like learn what we're talking about? You can't walk the talk unless you don't, if you don't know what you're talking about. Um, really tried to be mindful of our staff of color and not overtaxing them. Um, we have some new hires coming in um, that are people of color. And so we're taking time before they are onboarded to train our staff um, in anti-racism at work so that they um, are offering a very welcoming environment. It doesn't put stress on the person coming into the job. Um, uh, I feel like we, we're taking this pretty seriously at the city level. So um, it's really baked into all of our department's work plans. And there's a lot. Those work plans are basically how our department heads are reviewed at the end of the year. So there's a lot of personal responsibility baked into that as well. So there is accountability, accountability measures there. Um, I feel like I'm rambling, so I'm sorry. <laughs> it's uh, but I think that's sort of where we're at with those recommendations. It's also come up at council multiple times now. So that's really where those like the rubber hits the road when we're making sure that council members are on board. So um, uh, I'm pretty pleased with what came out of that phase one for us on staff, staff, staff side. So sort of where we're at. Great. Cameron, is your sense that the community knows about all of this good and intentional work that's happening? Probably not. And that gets back to that communication thing, right? So one of the, the, the things that has come up multiple times in a lot of the studies that have happened, especially like the police review committee just presented is, is um, how are we communicating with the public? do we catch everything? Like I put work that we're doing about equity and inclusion in our weekly report, but does anyone read that? I don't know. Our council does. Um, anyone in the community can, but do they? I don't know, to be honest. And so um, how do we get that message out of something that I think we are, that, that is a needs improvement sort of uh, statement, I guess I could make about that. So no, probably not, probably not, no. I was curious because when you when we talk about doing this convening that like Shana said brings people together across the silos it's just helpful if people feel like the work what they've participated in so far has led to some kind of action right and without that it's a lot harder to to gather people together so that's kind of what was behind the question and I have one more question then I'll pause and see if Nadia has any questions you know we wrote this proposal a while ago, we did a body of work, you're moving forward. Does what we wrote still seem relevant? Do, do these activities still make sense given you've all been there working on the ground, we, you know, we're not down there. So we just wanna make sure that the, there's still relevance in how we conceptualize this work now that you're partway through it. <clears throat> I mean, other folks can can chime in, but I think so. This is very helpful for us. It provides sort of like a framework to build future future work. It feels very relevant to me. I don't think anything's wildly changed. Michael here. Uh, well, I'll, I'll speak also on behalf of the police review committee, uh, which in incorporated all the material that you had that you sent to us. And I know that that has gotten, the, the, the police review committee got a lot of publicity, probably for the wrong reasons, but um, I do know that 
uh, and we got reports back from Cameron on on the on the police department's response to that. And I know that a lot of the of the, the council was enthusiastic about going forward with the, the least controversial ones, and uh, and I and I and it has been reported in the press. It got a lot of attention, and now there are things happening. Uh, the the coffee, the coffee with a cop is reestablished, um, and it's at the it's it has been or it was this past weekend at the farmers market. Farmers market is now closed down, so I'm uh, until January, but I know that they've um, assigned um, one member of the staff to be the outreach person for the for the force, and. You know, in that respect, I think there's been a, a fair amount of attention to what both of those committee, what both of these committees, CJAC and the Police Review Committee, uh, have have done. And the, the, what I've heard in the in the community is pretty much positive. So, yeah, I think we still have like. I like, I think one of the markers that I was thinking about too, is that we wanted, we were talking about doing a big, um, like recruitment drive for CJAC to, to build out, like, fl you know, fl bulk out and, and like diversify our membership of our committee. And we decided to not go through with that until going through this process. And I think of just being like, yeah, we still haven't, <laughs> we still haven't done that because we still have so much farther to go in this process. And I think I, in looking at this, I'm a little bit of me is like, oh, like phase one took a lot longer than we thought, like these, and this is pushing things out for a lot longer and for like, and kind of like, and, and turning it up a little bit more too, you know? And so I feel I'm looking at the, the next phases of this plan and being like, whew, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of time. It's a lot of, um, commitments that we're like asking of members while, you know, we're, you know, still dealing with a pandemic and still, you know, having other big priorities as a city. And so I think um, I'm, I both feel like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what like to take off or what to like turn down, but I'm those, I'm feeling a little bit of the, that like low, like anxiety is a very strong word, but like, like low level, like ooh, that noise instead of anxiety. Yeah. Adia, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask just based on our conversation so far? Uh, I actually really don't have any questions at the moment. I'm still just sort of, okay. yeah, no, I think it's really clear. It was great to, um, so that question that you asked was the one that I had. And I was, I I'm just thinking about how might the importance of, of really find, you know, the intentional way that you can report out the work that's being done um, prior to um, trying to engage the larger, you know, community in additional work, right? I think momentum um, is, is, uh, is hard, you know, especially when you slow down some work and you have to kind of pick it back up. And I think especially for people who have already engaged, sometimes it can be, um, can feel exhausting or, or pointless if people don't see their efforts, um, sort of uh, showing up in, 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 in progress. Um, so that was really one question I had. I, I think I was also going to say um, that um, in one of the projects that we are working on currently, um, we've one uh, a, a staff member of of the organization had worked with us to do a series of connections with community leaders, and there an outcome of that was um, this person having. Um, having a real reflection moment and and they shared this in a in a in a write-up as part of the sort of the the report and and it was um it was meaningful in a different way it was not the type of outcome that um where you write up and you say you know i spoke to x many of people and this was a common theme that i saw throughout and um here are some recommendations that come out of that it was a more um uh, uh personal reflection of the impact of being in dialogue with folks on this individual who happens to be a white man. And I think um, that we saw great value in that. And I don't even think we fully 
um, kind of sorted out other than like making sure that this is part of our has like a, a significant amount of space in our you know final report and we and, and some dialogue but I don't think we fully even have really thought about you know what the impact of um, folks sharing the stories of their own personal transformations as part of work and so I think that's one bit that I think um, that I've been you know kind of thinking about more as we you know as our creative discourse group <clears throat> Um, using the model transformed people transform organizations right and communities and right and and that means like individual work right we, we have to be doing individual work so I'm just I'm reflecting on that as I look through the phase two uh, phase two plan and thinking about how you might bring forward one um, what you've already done to folks so that they really have a good understanding of what's how their work is, is impacting um, uh, has impacted um, um, you all already and the direction that you might want to go in and then but also like really digging a little deeper to think about how those individuals who have been working on this project are impacted by the work in um, individually and then how do you weave that in as you think about what phase two will look like so those are some of the not so much questions but thoughts that i have um, as i look at phase two I think another question I have has to do with timing, and I don't know if you all have thoughts about that. And um, as the pandemic lingers on, I know we've been trying to get back in, in person, you know, with people. So I just wondered um, your thinking about timing. Yeah, I mean, I feel like looking at Cameron, like I, I know I'm on a friend's birthing team and I've made a commitment to not hang out with people in person until after you know like and so it's just like yeah we're still we're still in the thick of it and I know the city has you know oh you know you're in the office every single day and so um yeah of, of having a day-long some you know and this is also to it's like a day-long a summit where we're also asking people who are you know hardest hit by COVID to be participate fully participating and wanting to you know be be mindful of that um so I think the like work sessions maybe it's like a less of an ask than like let's hold a big event where we're bringing together like lots of folks in, in Montpelier yeah that 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 is a very real question thanks for thanks for naming that um when um and is there any way to move around some of these things but I mean I don't I don't think so I think it's like you've got it you know it's the the summit then the dialogue then the draft equity meeting right what um, one thing I wonder about, and you know, just we, of course, we our plates are full right at the moment, so that's that's a reality. But I also wonder about, you know, um, what would it, it would look like if the if the this phase of the work kind of um, the summit piece got pushed back until the spring, possibly, you know or even early summer and that in this interim period that you all are just really working on creative ways to get the message out about all that you're doing, right? And just um, be doing that kind of work leading up to that. So I just wonder about that in terms of timing. And that doesn't necessarily mean we wouldn't work with you until then, but it could be that we're supporting you with a little bit of consulting time around ways to you know, build some of these bridges and check in with people. This is what we're doing. How does it, you know, how do you think it's working that kind of thing while you're planning to do this kind of convening? So that's one thought that I wonder about. That was going to be my, my, my question is, is really to me <laughs> on the staff side, it seems very much around creative discourses availability, right? We're doing our budgeting process now, and um, that that is going to be quite a bit of our staff capacity when it comes to like public communications and really getting people on board with the budget. Not to say that that doesn't align. I think that's a good time to start talking about like equity within the budget process, that kind of thing. And so, um, early spring, summer makes sense to me. That's still within this fiscal year and that's still where the money for this committee lies right now, right? Council had committed at least two years. Um, we're gonna be continuing to put, ask to put money for this committee in the budget. Um, that's a commitment of my office to ask for it. So 
I don't know about fiscal year 23, but right now you do have 10K. So, I mean, whatever timing this committee and, and and, you know, creative discourse wants to embark on, you know, staff capacity will be way freer in the spring and summer. I will say that. After town meeting day, that's the best day ever. That's the new year. It's the best day. So, um, assuming the vote goes right. <laughs> well, I mean, I'd like to think positively, Michael. <laughs> uh, but that's a good point. Right. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Michael. I was going to say that one of the, th the things that, um, that the, I think the committee is learning is that we have to find out who are the people and where to go to make contacts with the agencies or organizations and people that can help us decide what steps to take. For example, we, we talked a little bit about uh, language access and we had to figure out where, where do we go to find out where we can get support for that. So that was one research project. We had a meeting with people from Downstreet and uh, and the question was, well, where do we, and the, the question, the issue came up about um, VHIP. Uh, none of us knew about VHIP, so we, we had to find out where to go to, to get, to, to find out, and get information about VHIP. So we're in a, I think in, in a, another phase of self-education in order to be able to implement some of the recommendations that came out of your report. And we're slowly accumulating the information, finding out who are the, 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 the people who we need to talk to next. And then we can use that information to convene smaller groups, for example, on the housing. We, uh, we, I have made con connection with the guy who's, uh, uh, his name is Sean Gilpin, who's running the VHIP project for the state. And, uh, we talked a little bit about maybe we need to reach out to landlords and have a, have a meeting with landlords and, and property owners who would be affected by this. So I think that's where we are in preparation for going for doing something big. We're trying to collect the, 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 the contact points. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think that's part of, that's a good thing also to communicate out, right? To the community, what, what you're learning and um, like Nadia said, not just the, the logistics and the resources, which is important, but also the internal work as well, you know, and, the, and how you're all growing and understanding about <clears throat> what it means to be doing this work. So does that mean for, for I'm just like being mindful of time here too, for kind of the next steps of um, recognize, you know, and and budget wise, right? So we've got ten thousand dollars to work with, unless we do like additional fundraising, which, as we've you know established before, has been has been challenging. And um, you know, especially without having like a really clear, you know, uh, outcome ask and not a, like a process asks. Um, and so, although you know, definitely we have been doing that and would we'll be open to doing that again too. But um, we have ten thousand dollars to work with for this, you know, until July first or you know, June thirtieth. 2022 and so would that be folk do you think that you know how how to split that up between um the summit um you know to, to organizing for the summit and for the like consulting and kind of um coaching I should say coaching support um for this committee for for getting the word out there and, and everything else yeah I think this is where you know, Nadia and I, so of course we're a new business now, we have a new business model. And so we do have to rework some of these proposals from before. Yep. So I think yep. that, um, okay. I think Nadia and I uh, have what we need to be able to have a conversation and then come back to you with um, a proposal and a time frame. And it sounds like you have $10,000 to work with. So that's what we'll, we'll um, create something with that amount of resource in mind and keeping in mind where you all are and where you're trying to get to. And then the, the next conversation, we're, that sounds great. Thank you so much. Um, and then for the next conversation that we're going into is looking at that FY23 budget. So that'd be, you know, G, July, why is this so hard for me? July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023. And obviously, I think would want to continue working on the the this project and wanting to continue, you know, pushing forward these proposals too. And so, um, I know that 
budget conversation, you know, we're, we're going into this right, right after this. Um, and that those will probably be due. I mean, Cameron just left, but they'll, they're due soon. Um, and so would that be like just an, another, I, I think asking for another additional $10,000 would be like the easiest thing to do, um, you know, just keeping it consistent. Um, but that would probably be for this next phase of small group dialogues, draft equity plan, community celebration um, with that additional coaching as well. Um, and so I, I don't know what pieces of that would make sense for FY23 too. If, and I don't know if you're ready to have that conversation yet um, think, as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we, I think Nadia and I need to have that conversation. And then I, I think that it makes sense, Nadia, I'm just looking to you here, but I was thinking maybe we do a proposal for two years of work and then knowing that there's, you know, again, we chunk it out in phases. Right. Nadia, does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think it makes sense. I think the, the clarifying question that I wanted to ask was when you when you say, you know, the easiest thing would be to ask for like another 10,000. I mean, when I look at <clears throat> this <clears throat> budget here, it's it's it's, you know, it's it's more it's more than that. So I'm wondering, are you thinking because that's what you'll probably be able to ask for and achieve, we should be thinking about how we would phase it in that you in other words, you wouldn't be able to do all the things here. But that is that what you're asking us to kind of think about what we could do with a 10 with an additional 10 in FY 2023. Is that what you're saying? Okay. And that's I, I'm glad you're back, Cameron. Do you think that makes sense too? Or <laughs> or do you do you think, you know, of could we ask for additional funding or apply for grants for additional funding to be able to fill in the gaps there? I would say be conservative right now. We're still facing yeah. a lot of economic downturn and un yeah. uncertainty. I think while $10,000 doesn't sound like a lot, most committees have no budget ever, right? Um, so I think that's conservative. And if there's any way to get more that we can try. Um, but I think asking for a continued 10,000 each fiscal year for right now, and then try to get grants to build on that, I think is a conservative way and a safe way to continue to get that funding, right, for this work. So yes, it would be, um, I think it would be advisable to, to ask, you know, Sue and Nadia to, to figure out what work can be done within that, con, that, that constraint. And then um, whatever we can build on top of that, we can build on top of that. Okay. And when do you need this? Uh, I, you know, I don't know if we can just let's hear your time, your ideal time frame, and then we'll see what's possible. Cameron, for the budget for. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll just be asking for it. Uh, you have a phase two already to, to support that. Uh, obviously, I think that would change a little bit, but I have the backing documents and I know I don't need anything for that. Okay. Sorry, that's why I was quiet. I was like, I, what oh, are okay. we asking? I was like, okay. no, we're good. I'm for, good. I guess for putting it into the FY23 budget, we can just put that in without like a proposal or anything. Right. Yeah. You've okay. already given that proposal. You've already given that proposal to council and they knew it was going to be multi-year. So. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, Nadia and I will look at this because as I was saying, Cameron, I think you may have left the room, but so, you know, we... <laughs> we have a new business model now and that is impacting our price structure and everything a little bit. And so I just want to talk with Nadia and make sure this all makes sense. And so we'll have some kind of communication with you about um, <clears throat> the next phase and then our thoughts about the phase after that, especially if you're thinking that this ask over the next several years is going to be consistently around that certain $10,000 mark. Okay. That would be great. Thank you. And we're also not holding y'all hostage, right? You know, our contract does not need to be if if that if y'all are out and we need to rebid this work that we totally understand that. So thank you thank for you. being flexible um, enough to even consider this sort of work. So appreciate of you. Of course. Of course. Well, I'm so pleased that the, the uh, work that we did and I know the police committee did a tremendous amount of work. And so it's just really great to see that uh, the work is being taken seriously. And Cameron, it sounds like you've done a lot um, uh, to lead in, at the municipality level to make sure the work is integrated. So that 
that's a good way to start the day. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We'll Bye. be in touch soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Nice to meet you. You too. Yeah. <laughs> Um, awesome. Okay, should we dive into the public budget survey process and communications needs kind of as the next, yeah. Next, I don't have any ahead. updates, so oh, it's okay, going to go great. really quickly. Uh, <laughs> that has not been Talking shared. That cool. has not been finished or shared yet. As soon as it is, we, I think it, that it would make more sense to talk about it when that's done. Um, I will, I was trying to pull up the, um, the budget timeline, but I got distracted. So hold on a second. You're here and I can, um, oh no, that's not what it is. Nope, I don't have it. <clears throat> okay. I'll, sh I, I don't know where it is. <laughs> Well, no, I, I think that's, I think we can circle back on that in okay. two weeks, right? Like there, it, it's not that urgent or, yeah, okay. So then should we move into the budget request and creative, including creative discourse work and stipends for city committees? So I think for creative discourse work, it sounds like budget in 10,000. And um, if they come back with a proposal that's more, we'll, you know, yeah, renegotiate the, the work or, and, or, apply for grants and or other creative solutions. Um, does that sound good? Anyone have any concerns with that? Um, and then stipends for city committees. So I'm going to share my screen again. And then Cameron, do you wanna talk about it a little bit? Yeah, I can. So there's a lot here. So I'm, I'm trying to, I found out ironically enough that there's, far more committees than even I was aware of, because there's quite a few ad hoc committees that haven't met in the time that I have been here. And so, um, you know, there's been a lot of digging. So you see a lot in red and that stuff I need to confirm because there wasn't any clear um, documentation that I could find that said, this is how many times they're gonna meet a year, right? And I wanna make sure that this is a pretty accurate um, accounting of all of the things that people volunteer for. So some of this will maybe move around as I get more information. Um, but on average, it's, it's a lot more than we had anticipated. So on average, I took an annual average amount of meetings that any given committee may have, uh, what their schedule was, how many members are in there, and then budgeted $50 per because that was the recommendation. Now you can see that is well over $100,000 a year. Um, Obviously, some people will not accept a stipend, but the idea is that it should be available to everyone, right? So I also gave some breakdowns of what it would look like at different levels of stipends, um, even though I know the recommendation was 50, just to be more realistic with what our budget constraints are right now. So that's really what it is. Uh, this, is this would be I wish I, I wish Lauren was here today because I, I really want to know what she thinks about what process we should go through for presenting this or um, if this would be enough for me to take this to our budget Congress and ask for this to be included. I, I just don't know what she would want to do. So um, there's a couple different steps y'all could take. You could take this to council yourselves. Uh, we could write it in a memo to send to council. I could bring it myself to pitch in a budget Congress and bring it to council. Um, it's Maybe just like before going into process real quick, just like any like initial react. Can we just, can we just pause oh, yeah. real quick? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, um, Cause I did, I looked at this too and I was like, Ethics was like thirty thousand dollars. Are yeah, like a hundred thousand? Is that just because we have more committees we have or more members more on committees. committees? We have a lot of committees. Okay. This is well, an aggressive then, amount of committees. You know, what's interesting to me, um, just initial reaction is, you know, this is the labor that helps our city function. Mm -hmm. um, so if you think about just that and all the free labor that is 
to now been involved in doing so much good work in the city. Um, it's, it's just an interesting like highlight on how how things get done, how how a community functions. Um, so and and just irrespective of the right number, it's just a really interesting thing to to see um, because so much labor is hidden, you know. Um, and so there's a value, you know, it's not perfect, right? It's not like an exact like hour, or, you know, um, value to dollar amount, but um, yeah, it's just I'm really interested in it as a a conversation starter for sure. Mm -hmm. So I I want to add something. I was wondering what is the expectation of city from committees to meet because they are meeting like different like quarterly, mm -hmm. monthly, twice a month. So if there is a specific uh, time for meeting, maybe you can put that one. And if the committees are meeting extra, then you don't have to offer, I don't know, you know, something like that. It, yeah. it will maybe affect the budget positively, but I don't know the rules or anything. So I just want to mention this. Helen, you are looking at a ruleless, lawless land, and there is not <laughs> wild there is west. Not, <laughs> there is not any sort of preconceived schedule for anything, honestly, for, for when it comes to committees because they're volunteer based, right? So, and most of them are council created. So, council could say, for instance, with the police review committee, you're going to meet from X time to X time, and we expect uh, something at the end of this. So it's kind of up to the members to determine how often they're going to meet to reach that goal for council, right? Um, most of them schedule their own meetings. Yeah, like y'all have changed how often you meet or when you meet. Um, you know, the only legal requirement is that they're noticed in a certain amount of time so people know that the meetings are coming up. So that would be, that's why I said sort of schedules like the annual average number of meetings because some people meet a ton. And then some people meet once or twice a year at most, right? So um, uh, it would be easier if there was a standard. Yeah. yeah because uh, because there's a kind of standard in the member number, right? So I no. think no, it no standard. Okay. No. I tell you. It's again a building code of two members, and then the energy advisory committee is twelve. <laughs> and so yeah. It's oh huge. yeah, I thought the numbers yeah. is coming from uh, the city. Okay. It's, yeah. Okay, got it. <laughs> and even within this too, I think like all, you know, our meetings are like an hour, and then just during the community fund board, we're blocking off like a multi-hour long meeting to review the grants. So, you know, like, and then there's also like a huge amount of. I mean, so we have time that we do in between the, you know, but like for the reviewing the grants, it's like blocking off you know 15 hours to review the grants before going into them. That's not included in this, you know, for for um because this is just meeting time too you know um yeah and then I also just want to think too like this is the max number and so right like this is definitely not going to be the full you know this is not like not all of the members will be on it they won't have all of the meeting you know like just for that number um stuff too you know and then also if not including all of that other hidden labor that um Jeremy was just talking about of you know mm -hmm. that it's not yeah um so yeah those are some of my reactions I guess too but Michael I feel like you have the most experience on like lots of different types of city committees do you have any like reactions too no I, I am impressed by seeing the full number although I, I every every time I go to the, the the city's website and I look at that list of committees I, I see oh yeah there are a lot of committees here and <laughs> <laughs> um you're right. The the committee time commitment varies enormously depending on the committee, and uh, mm. the committees that I've been on, uh, unfortunately, only one I, that I recall required a lot of back a lot of preparation time. But uh, the rest of them, you you need to put in a lot of time. And that, and what are we? And the question mm -hmm. is, what are we? What are we? What are we trying to accomplish by doing this? Uh, do we want to be able to give people 
who, who might need help, for example, with childcare, some some extra cash to handle those so that they can attend the meetings. Uh, that's that's one thing. Are we trying to reward participation? That's a whole other thing, and it does. I think it also. I think that erodes the sense of pub, the, the notion that this is public service, and and um, and I think we have to be careful about that. Uh, so that, that's all I can say about it. I mean, it is an, it is an impressive number to think that well, there's a maximum of one hundred and two thousand dollars that could be used up. I, I'm I'm pretty confident that that would not be anywhere near what was actually asked for. But if, our, if one of our goals is to try to um, pull people in who, who feel that they, they have not the resource, the financial resources to be able to devote that time, mm -hmm. then I think we need to push forward with something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that is like our one and only goal here. You know, like I, I from, from my perspective, like I think it is about how can we make sure that people who want to be able to participate in committees be, be able to, right? And of like, yeah, if people, folks want to use that for um, getting childcare or, or parent care or what, you know, like, or just, just to be able to take the time away from work or, you know, like whatever, just to, to make participating um, accessible, like more accessible, I guess, even recognizing this isn't going to solve all the problems by any means, but that it's like one step that, you know, we can do to help try to make committee participation more accessible. Um, but that's, what, yeah, thanks for naming that. Yeah. I think this is important. I think this is important because one of the, com the, the complaints that we're hearing nationally is, well, government is too much in, in our face. And what, when you look at a, a chart like chart like this, what you see is government is us. Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it, uh, we we are we are a self governing uh, society in some ways, um, and in order to make that stick, I think it's important to have something like this to allow more people to to join in this effort and mm -hmm. take away the the barrier of, of there's government and there's people and then there's the citizens, um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that that's very important. Uh, path to try to follow. Um, one thing I really, this is great conversation. I really appreciate everything you're saying, all of you. Um, so I'm just wondering too, in terms of process, like if we approach this in the spirit of a prototype, something we want to test out at a small scale, that seems palatable to just in terms of the overall budget, the city's trying to do, and also just testing against what we want this program to do for committee participation mm -hmm. um, and making sure folks who maybe wouldn't participate could participate through a program like this. So um, I'm wondering if that's where we get into some kind of more constraints around, you know, is it only certain committees? Is it, um, I don't want to put more hoops to jump through, but for example, is it an income declaration so there's a cap um i don't know what those parameters are but in 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 the spirit of keeping it small and manageable as a test a pilot i wonder what we could propose to council mm -hmm. okay so now we're getting into the process yeah <laughs> here we go go ahead cameron yeah. well honestly that makes sense to me is a pilot program and then it's very easy to see does that increase the um, folks who are applying for it does it does it help increase the diversity of who is applying for the committee seats um and maybe uh, maybe in the pilot program you can or the city can ask do you want stay uh, you know to support financially when you spend time in the committee some people will say no so it should be optional right because as michael said i always think that it's a public service so doing it voluntarily is like make makes me feel better about myself because i feel i'm contributing to my community so maybe they will say no i'm i'm okay 
to do it. And some people, yeah, I want to do, but I need uh, for like, as we mentioned, childcare or other reasons. So maybe it will be also good for us to see who needs and who doesn't. Well, I do have a meeting with uh, committee chairs on Monday. Mm. Shana, you got that invite, right? Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, I don't know why not. So I'll figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's to remind everyone about open meeting laws. So um, I'll mention it then as well. Great. That would be awesome. Okay, so I reckon, I'm just also recognizing we're getting close on time here, but does that, um, do we feel like we have the good right next steps here? Like what, what, is, what is the timeline that we would need to make this decision is another question. Okay, it's not like, well, I guess when is, when is the budget, can you remind us on when the budget process is for FY23? Right now. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I think this is something I can certainly start floating in the conversation. Um, I would need, uh, we, it would need to, we would need to make that a priority of our next meeting with y'all to, to sort of figure yeah. out what you'd want to put forward, um, to stay within the timelines. If we want to change it other than like wholesale, here's what the recommendation is. Right. Yeah. Um, if, if this is useful, I would be willing to kind of draft some just guidelines for how we might like present a pilot sized program around this that we could have something at least to just start with the conversation. Hey, Lauren's here. Sorry, Hi, I Lauren. just stopped Lauren. sharing my screen and I saw that. Didn't hear you join. Sorry about that. Sorry, I just popped on. Sorry, I'm running late for another meeting. Um, Jeremy, I think that would be great. And I think just like, do we want to have just a second of like, do, do you think like uh, sticking with like a $30,000, like working backwards from a cap or, or you, you will think about that or maybe like, and present like some ideas or proposals. Of maybe it's just, I mean, a, a num a few different options with the goal, of course, of being to like having a budget number that is, you know, feasible. Um, and I don't know, maybe Cameron, you do have a ballpark number that could be a target. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, Not so I think just some options would be, yeah, Michael. Uh, we, we were using the $50 as uh, uh, um, per meeting because that's what Essex was, Essex did. Do we know if Essex has the same number of committees as we do? Uh, it that's might what be. Cameron was saying is they have a lot less. <laughs> so. Yeah, so I mean, I think we, I think it would be, to, wise to to retreat from the fifty dollar goal because it's it's infeasible I think with with the number of committees that we have uh, maybe use a more modest figure that would allow allow people at least to offset some portion of of what they spend in have to spend in cash to attend um just uh, just looking at the reality of, of what we've got here of this large number of, of committees large number of people and obvious limitations on that mm -hmm. i mean you guys sorry to like jump in late on this like from some experience with like committees that have started doing this more and more like we found like not many people actually do it take it right so i'm like like obviously we would need to budget a maximum in case everybody all of a sudden decided to, but I don't think most people would. So like, I, I would rather make it feasible for people to attend with something that actually like works. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, how they got experience that we learn from and then, and see like, are we getting massive uptake or not? Like we had like a huge fight about this for the climate council that the state's running and like got all this money allocated and then like almost nobody's actually using it which is fine but it's there for anyone who does want it and right. like the way it's offered matters and stuff but I'm like so how about, send, how about sending a survey to the active members and ask their opinion 
can give us some kind of feedback how many people will want this or think that it's a good idea the issue that i have with that is i feel like the goal of it is to bring new members on who haven't been able to participate and so by just working backwards from the members who we currently have we're not going to be getting that good data you know um of like what what would be the most helpful um okay so i need to leave yes shortly. sorry <laughs> <laughs> thank you it is nine o'clock and we didn't even start looking at all of matt michael's really important work on vhip and the landlord meeting follow-up um, Michael, is it okay if we just, if we punt this to the 17th, is that? Okay, I will inform. I mean, we're out of time, yeah, so. I, I, the last, I don't know okay. what you got from me because I don't, I, my email stuff is always messed up, but I had, um, I suggested that the next meeting, the 17th, he would be here, but I'll contact him and say, we, we push have to out. wait, we have to push that off. He's okay with that because he thinks that actually, um looking a little bit better a little longer longer down the road would give him more information so i i'll just let him know that we're not going to do that on the 17th but we will get back to him as, as soon as we have some dates to offer cool um <clears throat> so let's look at so the 17th we will circle back on the um stipends we will um look at the the public budget survey process and communications needs um, and dig into VHIP um, uh, landlord meetings follow up. And then on December 1st, we will have hope, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll circle back too, but of having um, VHIP folks come to give us the report back. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you all did, so I just much. Want, yeah. did, did, it, did, did you, you got the documents that I sent the, the, the two about what the law is and, yes. and something like that? Okay. Yep. And has yep. that been circulated to everybody? Yes. Okay. Yep. I did just send it last night though. This oh, is a right. problem. Okay. It's like, I feel like over every year, like the day that I send out the, you know, it like gets, you know, it's, now it's like eight hours before the meeting I send it out. So I apologize for that. And I don't know what to say. It's like, it is, I'm like, I'm going to work on it. So okay. thank you for sending it, Michael. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Thanks all. Yeah. Thanks thank so you. much for all of your work. This was such a fun cool. meeting. I'm feeling fired up. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>